Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Johnny Chivers and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the AWS services you should know as a data engineer. This is particularly useful if you're new to the AWS cloud and you're trying to transfer your skills. AWS has over 250 services, so it can be a little bit complicated to know where to get started. In this video, I've boiled it down to the key services that I feel a data engineer should know. I'm going to take you through a little project in order to formulate the ideas in your head of how you should use these services. So without any further ado, let's take a look at this project and we'll go through a diagram, an architecture diagram as we go. So firstly, we have data ingestion. This can be broke down into two things, real time or streaming ingestion or batch ingestion. For streaming, you should really get familiar with the AWS services under the Kinesis umbrella. Kinesis is a fully managed serverless solution that allows you to stream data in real time or near real time. This is particularly useful if you have a streaming use case where you need to ingest data, but you don't want to manage the underlying infrastructure. In terms of batch, I've listed Lambda first. My preference is never to use Lambda for ETL, but I do see customers and I do see developers using it, so I have included it. Be careful of the limits around Lambda. Your ingest of data has to fall within a 15 minute range, and there are also restrictions around the amount of memory and CPU that you can use. Personally, I prefer to use Glue and EMR, which I have listed. Glue is a serverless solution for ETL that you can write either Spark or Python code, or you can actually use the visual editor now as well, and then ETL or ingest your data into AWS. EMR stands for Elastic Map Reduce. You may have heard people talk about Hadoop or Spark or Hive. Well, all these runtimes are available on EMR. It's more involved than Glue because you actually have to manage the underlying infrastructure yourself. There is EMR serverless that is relatively new and I am starting to see adoption of this as well. But because this is the getting started of the services that you should know, I'm not including it here. Once you have these services nailed, then we have to store our data somewhere. So the three core services that I see the majority of use cases using to store their data is S3, RDS, and DynamoDB. S3 stands for Simple Storage Solution. This is an object storage within AWS, and it forms the backbone of data lakes in AWS. If you're not familiar with this service, stop the video and go learn about it now. The next service I listed is RDS. That stands for Relational Database Service. As it's relational databases, it covers things like Postgres, MySQL, Microsoft SQL, to name but a few. I see a lot of use cases where we're ingesting data, then storing it in these databases that we're probably familiar with already outside of AWS. And one that might be new to you is DynamoDB. This is the AWS managed offering for NoSQL. I see a lot of use cases using that when they move away from the more traditional RDS and realize that they can store things in a NoSQL format. A lot of it's managed for you by AWS, but there's lots of good information tutorials out there on the internet. If you're new to DynamoDB, feel free to go get started. Then once we have the data stored in AWS, we need to actually do some analytics on that data or provide a way for our downstream users to do analytics on the data. Commonly, I see users use these three services. The first is Redshift. This is a columnar store database that allows us to store petabytes of data at scale and then analyze that data through queries. Use Redshift where you have a need for massive aggregations and store the data in a columnar format. QuickSight is the BI tool from AWS. This allows you to create and visualize dashboards. So if you have a need for reporting dashboards, be those interactive or static, think QuickSight. And finally, I've listed Athena. Athena is a serverless engine that lets us query data stored in AWS, such as S3. Athena allows you to write SQL-like queries and then query the data without managing the infrastructure. I find Athena particularly useful if you're running an AWS data lake. Then we need to actually orchestrate this entire pipeline together. At present, I see two main services in use. The first is step functions. 
I personally never really use step functions, but as event-driven architecture becomes ever more popular, I do see customers and users putting this into action, so I've listed it. The one that I am more comfortable with and see a lot of users use when they're running thousands of ETL pipelines is Manage Workflows for Apache Airflow from Amazon. This is the Manage version from AWS that lets you spin up Airflow instances and then schedule your jobs. What we also have to talk about now is discoverability. So we have all this data inside AWS, but actually how do our end users discover this data? I've listed three things here that you should really know. The AWS Glue Data Catalog, AWS CloudWatch, and AWS Data Zone. AWS Glue Data Catalog is a meta store for data that lets you register data in different locations such as S3 and DynamoDB. Users can then go in and discover this data and it keeps the schema for them as well. I have listed CloudWatch here as well. CloudWatch is important for discoverability and particularly observability because you can create things like CloudWatch alarms. It forms the backbone of a lot of the things you do in AWS. So I would advise you to go read about that service regardless if you're interested in data engineering or not. And the new service or the newer service that you may not have heard of is AWS DataZone. DataZone sits over your data lakes and data stores to form a data mesh and lets you govern and provide access as well as discoverability using the Glue Data Catalog. If you're not familiar with AWS DataZone yet, I'll leave a link in the description where you can go read more about it. And finally, we can't have a video in 2024 without discussing AI ML. So I've added Amazon Q as the service I think you should know when you're getting to grips as a data engineer in AWS. Amazon Q has the ability to write the likes of Glue code for you. So if you're stuck as an AWS developer and you're working in Glue, in fact, if you're working in EMR or any of the AWS services, you can type into Amazon Q as your assistant and say, hey, Amazon Q, can you help me code an ETL script that takes data from DynamoDB and stores it in Redshift, for example? And could you help me maybe show me how to schedule this using Airflow as well? Amazon Q will then help you script that. However, the data engineers that know how to use AI, ML to enhance their productivity will replace the data engineers that don't. So that's everything today in terms of this video. I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll throw a link into my website down below where I have more AWS material for free as well. And until next time, folks, thanks for watching.